welcome to day two in the week of a life of a small business owner. We are just about to head over to Great Yarmouth, which is about 30 minutes away for delivery. Uh, and then after that, we are back in the workshop doing some more making. Uh, delivery made, we weren't able to film because the school was right in the middle of the uh, town. So it was really hard to park and stop and had to jump out, drop them and run. But we're now at a large orange DIY st shop to buy some storage boxes for the workshop. So these are the boxes that I normally use. They are fairly robust and fairly cheap. Well, that was a one big fail. The, uh, they had the boxes, but they're not on special offer anymore. It gets quite expensive when you need to buy lots of them, so I have to hang fire until they go back to uh, three for two. Right, tea break is over. Let's crack on with the storage shed. at the whole videoing larky but we now have a uh, finished front for the shed we've got a finished back just over there and whilst all that was happening which I didn't film of course because I'm not very good at remembering we had a delivery of sleepers ready for the sand pit next week so here's quite an interesting one I've got to cut uh, how many pieces? Five pieces of two by two timber at 790. So if I'm going to do lots and lots of repeated cuts, what I've got along here, so the circular saw is there, and along here I've got a tape measure stuck to metal bars. So I know it needs to be 790. So I can set my wood at the end of it to 790, and then we just clamp, and clamp it down. That. There we go. And now I know every time I cut a bit of wood, I'm just going to feed it through the saw, push it up against the end there, and it'll be about exactly 790 mil. go and it's as easy as that I've got five bits cut all the same dimensions <laughs> So normally what I would do now is attach the floorboards to the base of the shed, which you just hear. That's the base of the floorboards. But because of where this shed is going, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do that on site, which is a bit different to what I normally do. Uh, but I am yeah, going to do it on site. So that is the floor pretty much as much as I can do in the workshop. Well, it doesn't always go as planned. Uh, this is current issue. So this is the back of the front piece. These are the doors here. 
you can see all the, the gap round. I have forgotten to put the diagonal. So normally I have a diagonal piece goes from that corner up to that corner there. And it just stops this end, which isn't supported, from sinking over time and sagging. But completely forgot to put it in. So I'm going to have to try and squeeze it in somehow. So I'm standing it up so I can see it. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to see see what happens. Problem solved. I've gone back and retrofitted two diagonals now, as you can see. So the uh, these corners shouldn't drop over time, I should say. Pretty solid. Just a little note, when you're doing uh, diagonal braces, you always go from the hinges up, because it's always going to be that corner that falls down. You quite often see uh, people who don't quite understand it doing it the other way, but that doesn't actually do anything. It's always got to be from the hinges up, and then that gives you sort of the maximum strength. A little side note, you might not have caught on the uh, on the time lapse, it's made me chuckle. So I held up a long piece of wood and I marked it with a pencil, but the uh, pencil was too long to fit to fit there, I couldn't get in. So I took one of my pencils there you go, and I had to cut it down into a short little stub so I could get the pencil in to draw on the, the line where I needed to cut. What's the uh, that saying? Invention is the mother of necessity, there was no other way of doing it. So. Uh, I've now got a short pencil. I don't know what to do with it. I'll just stick it in my pencil pot. Hopefully I'll need it another day. I had to film, film that little kip. It's one of the uh, joys of working on your own. You have to try and move the big pieces of wood around. It is uh, tricky sometimes, but we've managed it. So what I do, over in the corner I've just got a little sort of staging area. I put all the pieces when I've made them and they're ready to go but not quite ready to install yet so they're just out of the way so I can keep building in the workshop. I think we're going to call it a day there I've got about 20 minutes until the school run so I think that's a good time to finish it. I've come to sort of a natural end of all the work that was out so with that I'm getting lots more tools out and, thing, and things which I don't really want to do yeah, and I haven't really got the time to do that so I'm sorry it's a bit of a bitty day today but that's what happens in workshops sometimes. Sometimes you're out and about and uh, everything goes well. Sometimes like today, you have a few hiccups, but we get there tomorrow. I'm not quite sure what's happening tomorrow. I think it's just a workshop day. And I think what I might try and do tomorrow is build some stock items. So what you've seen so far is all items for specific projects, uh, but I might make some items that I can put in stock for when, if and when people do order them. Catch you tomorrow.